who knows me I am not big on trying to look pretty or perfect however this is a very special video this time so I'm kind of a little dolled up you know I got my little wig on I got my little makeup on I got my little lipstick on you know in the process of trying to look perfect and this video basically is speaking on perfection. And I named it Perfection is an Infection of the Mind. Since nothing or no one is perfect, but your mind says differently, then it is infecting or influencing your way of thinking. That infection can cause depression heartache, hardship, and can kill your spirit. So why do we constantly keep seeking perfection when it is unrealistic, unreachable, unbelievable, and unattainable? Let us break the root word of perfection down in simple language. So the root word of perfection is perfect. And perfect means without flaw what in this world is without flaw what person in this world is without flaw we all have flaws whether we want to admit it or not we use a filter on our pictures to hide the scars on our face or our body we use makeup to hide the uneven skin tone of our face Men use shaving lotions or shaving creams to help with the razor bump so they won't appear. We use plastic surgery as the answer to our body flaws. Some men or women use their status in life to hide or minimize their flaws. We would do just about anything to hide our flaws. What are we reaching for? perfection. I am a victim of perfection. Well, I used to be. I'm still a little bit of a perfectionist. Let's go tell the truth. A perfectionist is a person. A perfectionist is a person who feels everything must be perfect. My issue is everything must come together in symmetry. The lines must be straight. The words must be precise. Which is why I said, uh, a lot. I am looking for the perfect phrase or example to use. In school and when I was in college, my grades must be all A's. Or I was disappointed in myself. Forget I got a B. And a B is good. But I wanted an A. Because A meant perfection well people let me enlighten you on this perfection stupidity because the lord had to enlighten me on it and show you how it affects your happiness in life cloud your judgment so bad that you are making decisions in your life that is not in your best interest and if you do not get it right you will be miserable for the rest of your life as always I like to come from scripture and I'm coming from Romans chapter three and I'm basically going to be focusing on verse 23. However, please, please read that whole entire chapter. It will really, really, really enlighten you. It speaks on how when we are unfaithful, God is still faithful. How we are unrighteous, God is still righteous. How we can do evil, God is still good. I think it speaks on how the law makes it where we need a savior. But for this particular video, 
I'm just going to be focused on, on Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Again, I would advise people to read the whole chapter because it speaks on how the law has shown us that we need a savior because we are sinners, which means we are not perfect. And the law shows us that fact. But for the purpose of this video, again, I'm going to focus on Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Again, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. First, let us get one thing clear. God is perfect. And so are his laws. So if we all fall short of the glory of God, then why are we expecting another thing or person to be perfect when we are not? We seek the perfect job. Then you think you found it until somebody there makes you mad. Then you start seeking the perfect job. I thought you found the perfect job. You seek the perfect house. Supreme location, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, swimming pool. Then you meet your neighbors and now your house is not perfect. You start looking for another perfect house focusing now on the neighbors. But the house may not have the features your current house has. But you continue to waste time looking for the perfect house. The perfect car. They will attract people's attention and they want, they covet it. They want, they want that car just like yours. You like it when you drove off the lot. Now the car notes and the car insurance are kicking your butt. Now it does not make you happy because you are struggling to pay for something you wanted because you thought it was perfect. You look for the perfect mate. Hmm, yeah, we're going there. <laughs> for men. Tone body, but long eyelashes, pretty skin, dreamy eyes, <laughs> beautiful smile, <laughs> submissive. <laughs> For women, <laughs> tone butt, tone body, hair on their head, pretty skin, well dressed. He's got prestige. He got that smoking rag. He got that swag, that drip from head to toe. <laughs> and if he got a job with benefits, <laughs> you all in. Let us forget about their attitude is rude. Their demeanor is horrible. And as for the men, she cannot cook. She don't want to work. She don't take care of the kids. Well, she will. As long as she does not need your money for her hair, her nails, and her plastic surgery for her to keep looking perfect for you. For women, he all hanging out in the street all hours of the night, won't answer his phone, barely works, won't pick you up from work on time, but he in your car. <laughs> but boy, he sure looks good. And when other women see my man, <laughs> they say he's perfect. In a perfect world, everybody will be able to do whatever they wanted to do. In a perfect world, it's called utopia. But does utopia exist? Not in this world. But we are changing laws to create utopia. Because perfect, but perfection does not exist. So we are twisting laws to create perfection for all people when perfection does not exist. People, we are being bamboozled by the ideal of perfection, the philosophy of perfection, the insanity of perfection, the illusion of perfection. Let's go to scripture again. Colossians chapter 2. And I'm going to be coming from verse 6 through 8. And it speaks about the spiritual fullness of Christ. But I'm going to start with verses 6 through 7 first. And it says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, 
rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Being thankful for what you got is realistic. It's reachable. It's believable and it's attainable. When you continue to live your life in him, when you stay rooted in Christ, that means you are enriched from his soil. He plows the dirt and makes sure it is flourishing and producing productive fruit or growing productive fruit. Since you are thankful for what you got, you do not seek protection, perfection in everything. You seek Christ in everything. Let's go to verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Perfection keeps you captive because you would never be set free because you are seeking a ghost and ghosts are hollow. Perfection keeps you captive because you are seeking something with your eyes closed, wide open. Somebody's going to get that. So you are being deceived to believe perfection is real, but you are following human traditions, basic spiritual forces of this world that has taught you to believe perfection will make you happier than any other spiritual force in the heavenly realms. Let me ask you a question. When you were younger, and let's say you had a friend that had a car, maybe parents that had a little money, maybe he or she was a popular athlete, and you want to hang around them to ride on their coattails so you can enjoy some of the benefits they are so freely allowing you to do. People will see you with that person and think you got some things too, but you don't. As women, we call those type of guys scrubs. <laughs> However, <laughs> you do not mind being a scrub because as a scrub, you may be able to get the leftovers. You do not have the riches that your friend has, the car, maybe not even a popular athlete. That's okay because you're used to leftovers anyway. The company you keep makes you look good. Yes, I am still talking about perfection, so stick with me. The company you are keeping makes you look kind of perfect. Because you are hanging around what people say is perfection. But who is perfect? God. Psalms chapter 18, verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. Let me reiterate. Perfect means without flaw. The scripture says God's way is perfect and his word is flawless. If he is the company we keep, we appear perfect and flawless. That is why the world hates us and says, these Christians think they are perfect and they do nothing wrong. That is not what we are saying. That is what is being shown because of the company we keep. Our company shields us from the hollow and deceptive philosophies that depends on human traditions. What people see when they see us is the shield God has put up to protect us as long as we seek protection from him. As a Christian, we know we are not perfect, so we should not seek perfection from this world, but from God, who is perfect. He can heal that perfection, infection, and give you joy even in an imperfect world. We are not perfect. So you should not expect for someone else to be perfect and then get upset when they expect for you to be perfect. Nobody's perfect but God. Stop seeking perfection in everything and start seeking Christ in everything. And you will learn to be grateful and thankful for what you already got. And that, my friends, will bring you joy. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
And I pray that you do not allow perfection to be an infection of your mind. You all have a wonderful day. And as always, when godly wisdom ascends, a new mindset begins. Bye-bye. Thank mm-hmm. you.